of Singapore here. Uh, I'm Nawaz, uh, we're playing tabla, the drum what you see in front of me is tabla. Uh, to my left, there's a drum called Pakhawat, which is a very popular drum of India. And to my extreme right, you can see this excellent group called Damaru. Uh, they are playing these drums called Dol, Tasha, and there are a variety of drums which I think Kiru will explain to you all later. And to my extreme left, there is a Chenda, which is a very popular drum of uh, Kerala. So basically, uh, this is very unusual to have all these drums because the drums what I'm playing and what uh, 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 the Pakhawaj here is, I think basically these drums are made to be played in a smaller uh, auditorium, but these drums are considered like really a festive drums for celebrations and things. So first time we are doing this one specially for uh, uh, OTH. So feel free if you really want to clap with us, if you want to really, if, if anyone do want to dance, please give and dance, no problem. And if you feel like clapping, clap with us and uh, we will be playing various rhythms and uh, there, are, there, are, there are times that we play playing solos and they'll explain to you what exactly we're going to do. So with that, we'll start our drum team. Thank you. what they're going to play is uh, Chenda. Uh, this is a very festive and very auspicious drum of Kerala. I'll get Mr. Madhu to explain to you a bit more about the Chenda drums and uh, they can show you what exactly they're going to play. Okay. Hello, uh, good to see you. Uh, as uh, you mentioned, this is the um, traditional art form of Kerala, predominantly played on uh, in, in temples. It's a temple art form. One of these percussion ensembles, which uh, generally you see on Hindu temples in Kerala, um, there are different ways to play this. This uh, what we call is melam. That's the that's the local uh, uh, language. Uh, we call this as melam, which has got different versions or different um, types of uh, uh, play. But uh, here we are trying to showcase uh, something not so serious and something not really uh, into that uh, serious category, but something which is more we, uh, you know, keep you, keep you on, 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 on some, some, something you may want to clap, like you said, to dance, uh, maybe. And we, we have two different types of chanda. One is the front end, which is the, the one which is what we call uh, edantala, which is, uh, which is from the left hand side, and one is the right hand side. So if you notice the, the diaphragm of this, this is a different note, and there's a different, different sound. And on this, it's a different sound, and even with this angle of the stick, makes a different uh, uh, part, shall we say? That's the word. So uh, it isn't just a stick and and a bang, but there is a lot of science and uh, technique involved in handling and moving your uh, your wrists as well when you play. So this is uh, what we call chenda uh, And as I said, if you have any more questions, we are we were happy to take it uh, later on. Thank you very much.
Thank you. So that was Kerala and the drum was so much Chenda. Now let's bring let's bring Lassa uh, to Maharashtra where you're here to hear the Dhol and Tasha. Uh, I'll get the Satyuru to explain you about the drums. Hi everyone, my name is Akshara Tiru and I represent Gamlu Singapore. We're actually an Indian percussion organization. So what you see in front uh, is not only from Maharashtra. I'm just going to introduce this guy. This guy is called the Tasha. He's the leader of the group. It's quite a loud drum. The next drum is actually from Gujarat. It's called the Gujarat. <laughs> yeah. And then we have from Kerala with Leila Talan. We have also a uh, Nasik Dol. This one is 25 inch. This is from Maharashtra. We have the 23 inch Dol, Nasik Dol, also from Maharashtra. Yeah. And we also have the Peria Dabudu. This is from Tamil Nadu. So we're going to play probably two songs for you. We're going to play Maratha from Maharashtra and then we're going to play the Pangu So.
So now we go to again have one finale where we're going to play all these drums one more time together, and there'll be a question answer between the drums. We are going to have our own dialogue. Uh, the tabla might ask the question to the dhol, or dhol might ask the question to chenda, and chenda might. So the, the instruments will talk among themselves. There's going to be a big composition of the drums, and you can join us as well. So we start that drum ensemble and finale of this whole thing. Thank you.
Thank you. Maybe Tamil Nadu.
the legendary pandit kumar nandharwa was very well known for his unique vocal style he refused to be bound by the traditions of any gharana he was quite experimental with different forms of singing the name kumar nandharwa is a title given to him which means a musical spirit in hindu mythology we will also be presenting you a tarana and sohni as well this tarana was written by the famous musician and poet amir khusro i would like to shed some light on how a tarana came to be the words used in a tarana have a base in persian with no stated meaning one of the persistent legends relate to the encounter between amir khusro and a court musician named gopal naik legend has it that the two musicians were competing against each other Gopal Nayak sang a song in Sanskrit hoping to baffle Khusro. Khusro replied by singing a similar melody with Persian vocalic syllables. These syllables came to be later known as a tarana. Let us listen to Rag Sohni.
now end this evening's performance with Jagat Janani, a composition in Raag Bhairavi. <coughs> in Raag Bhairavi. The word Bhairavi derives from one of the eight forms of the goddess born in the burial grounds. It is one of the ten most fundamental Hindustani ragas. Bhairavi finds extensive application in auxiliary genres such as Tarana, Tappa and Thumri. We now present to you Raag Bhairavi.
Sommelier.